Uh, thank you, Chairman Barr. I uh, appreciate the witnesses being here and your candor. Um, I'm going to ask you what I think are kind of two of the most important questions, uh, frankly, uh, and I'm going to go down the line asking you this. Um, first is whether you take responsibility for the failure of your bank. Mr. Becker. Congressman, as, as CEO, I think you have to take responsibility for the ultimate outcome of your institution. Okay. Appreciate that. Mr. Shea. As chairman of the board, I think I did um, a responsible role throughout and fulfilled my duties. M Mr. Mr. Just, chairman, just, just, uh, just a second. <laughs> Is that, do you, do you accept the responsibility for the failure or do you I'm, believe I'm it was other management? Sorry, I'm sorry that the bank was, um, I'm sorry that the bank was, um, seized by the regulators. I thought we had a responsible I bet your depositors are too. the next morning. Okay, so I take that as a no. Uh, Mr. Roffler. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this was an event that is unforeseeable when it happens, and the contagion spread very quickly, and panic is very hard to control. What I feel responsible for is for our colleagues each and every day and our clients each and every day to make sure they're taken care of and supported during this time. So that also sounds like a no. So congratulations, Mr. Becker. You're the only one to man up uh, and actually take responsibility for that. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll start with you. And uh, since I can't get uh, the other two to actually admit uh, to their own failings, I I'd like to hear from you. What would you have done differently in hindsight? Congressman, I that question to the point made earlier by Congressman Foster, I've thought about that a lot over the last you know, several uh, months. And when you look back at, and with hindsight, what could have been done differently, I think that's, it's very challenging because when you make, when you go back and make decisions, you have to go back and look at the facts that you had. And what I try to describe in my written testimony is that the facts that we had that I had when I made my decisions, and I believe my team had when they made their decisions. And I truly do believe they made the best decisions, as, as did I, with the information that we had. We're, we're going we're gonna to explore that a little more, because yesterday you testified that SVB's capital and liquidity were validated by regulators in 2022. Your written statement points to an August 2022 letter sent by the regulators that conveyed the second highest possible CAMELS ratings of a two, uh, meaning satisfactory, on liquidity, capital, and market risks. Uh, despite a downgrade of the liquidity rating in August, uh, when you received the supervisory letter, uh, were these ratings cause for alarm, or did you seem uh, to confirm that you were on track? And, and then I also want to uh, address something that you had said to Chairman Barr. You said that the Fed did not talk to you about the interest rate risk. They had 31 matters requiring attention, but none of them were about interest rate risk? Talk to me about that. Yeah, Congressman, again, I'm going based on the best of my recollection. Yep, I, don't, I don't recall a direct conversation about that. I know that in, um, I believe, towards the end of 22, there was a matter requiring attention on interest rate risk that was issued. Um, that was, I was not in that meeting. I bet you, had that, you said late 2022. I believe that was in late 22. All right, so until that time, just as you had confirmed, I'm confirming what you were saying to Chairman Barr, this was not an issue for the regulators. Uh, Congressman, again, to the best yes, of my recollection, understand. I don't recall. Okay. Uh, well, you had a memorandum of understanding uh, to target matters requiring immediate attention. Um, uh, what were the major issues of that MOU, to, to your knowledge, your re recollection? Yeah, Congressman, if I could clarify one, one point. Yep. The, the memorandum of understanding was, was never issued. It was verbalized to us. Uh, and it was verbalized as to in, in early 2022. That doesn't really sound like a memorandum. Uh, it sounds like a conversation of understanding. Okay. Um, all right. So did regulators follow up with you on the status of this MOU conversation or ask for your timeline or give you a timeline? As I mentioned earlier, we uh, were incredibly responsive to the feedback okay. that we received at real, real quickly, uh, uh, we've got 30 seconds. You testified yesterday that uh, you offered several times to the FDIC to, quote, engage uh, potential acquirers and run through a list of the names who you believed would be most likely acquirers. And I, I, every single banker I've ever talked to, big, small, or medium, has always had some conversations with uh, competitors who might become allies. Um, you stated that you offered your assistance, but the FDIC never consulted you uh, in this. Um, can you confirm that? And why do you think they didn't? 
And uh, did they give you any indication why they had no interest in your opinion on this? Congressman, I can confirm that they did not engage me in reviewing a list or talking about any potential acquirers. The gentleman's Sad. I yield back.